here is the next part of my series on I bought a whole lot of bread and butter postcards and here's what I'm going to do with them. We already went through those and all of these. So we're on to the next pile, which is going to be these. And these are probably the best of the lot. And that is not saying a whole lot because they're not super great, awesome. But I'm going to try to list these for $18.50, $24.50, or maybe more and aim to get $12 or more for each one. And I'll show you what they are. Some of them I could be a little off on, but we're gonna, I'm gonna try to make some money. So here we have plenty of thrills on the toboggan shoot at Buck Hill Farms PA. So this is an early um, tobogganing hill view, nice snow scene. This is um, some kind of hotel, I believe, or resort with the snow, um, what do you call it? Ski resort, right. Okay, here's um, an interior view of one of the barracks at Camp Dix, Wrightstown, New Jersey. This is later Fort Dix. I, I guess they must have changed the name. I should look that up. Um, this is World War I era. It says, Passed by Censor, Washington, D.C. here. Oh, it's not hand-colored. It's not hand-colored, nor is it a real photo, but has that kind of look about it. And it's an interesting view of the um, the soldiers relaxing and as they're reading newspapers and hanging out. And there's tea towels draped everywhere, or real towels. I know an interesting military view. Of, it's postmarked 1918 when the U.S. got into the war and got out of the war. Here's another one. Uh, Coits outside the barracks camp, Dix, right town, New Jersey. So again, a recreational thing. Coits is like um, horseshoes, I think. And there they are in their World War I outfits with their spats and hanging out. This one is not written upon. All right, something different we have. <laughs> here we have some mica, AKA Edwardian glitter. And it's on this crazy ocean liner made out of blue flowers. I don't know what is going on on this postcard, but I kind of like it. There's four leaf clovers and a flower ship and glitter and squirmy wormy glitter in the waves and smoke glitter. I don't know, <laughs> it's unused. You can see the embossing on the back. It's printed in, in Germany, probably Europe. So this is pre-war. I don't know, it's cool, right? <laughs> um, back to the military. This one is World War II, however, Air Base Squadron Quarters. And there's a little army truck there. This is also, let's see, this is also Fort Dix. Actually, I had some of these in a lower price pile and that might be where this belongs, but we'll try it. I'm not always consistent with these things. This is another uh, World War II one. This one says US Army photograph. Again, Fort Dix placing a telephone call. And I just, I found this one kind of charming. These apparent telephone operators and I don't know, it's just a slice of life in the 40s. And on a different note, we have Larry Ferrari on WFIL-TV Channel 6. I actually don't know personally anything about this fellow, but I gave him a quick look up, and apparently he's quite famous and is a broadcasting pioneer of some sort. So even though he's playing an organ here, oh, he might have been an organist. <laughs> um... I don't know if that is his autograph or just somebody wrote that, so can't do much of that. I mean, maybe I can look and try to find his autograph and see if it's even similar, but I can't really verify it. But at any rate, I think this will be meaningful to someone. We have Camp Dix again, back to World War I and gun practice. 
This is interestingly colorized. Like this guy's pants. Like what? <laughs> What's going on? But I think this will appeal to militaria collectors with the the weapons and so forth. It's also been used in 1918. Here we have um, tomato wagons waiting to be unloaded at the canning factory on Water Street, Bridgeton, New Jersey. And it's very interesting. I, I looked this postcard up and I saw there are real photo postcard views of the same scene, but apparently they then took those and made this sort of um, printed version that's been colorized and super half-toned. So for what it's worth, um, I think the real photo postcard versions of this would be worth more, but it's still kind of an interesting scene with like these huge bales of tomatoes, buckets of tomatoes, I guess they're not really bales, on the wagons. And it, it's just a very specific place as well. Um, somebody's handwritten 1908, so that gives us a clue as to the era. Here we have a, a patriotic Yankee Doodle came to town card, July 4th. This might not sell till it's more in season, but I think it's a, a very um, striking graphic view if you like that sort of thing. It has firecrackers, it has a bugle, it has a drum, it has Yankee Doodle. So um, it's gold stars and red, white, and blue stripes. Rather appealing. This is an early German card. Another patriotic one, but this one is supposed to be funny because he's this kid with <laughs> this kid with firecrackers and a gun and this kid who's smoking a firecracker like a cigar are lighting this woman's skirt on fire and I guess that's funny but at any rate <laughs> it is a sort of nice fourth of July image here we have another one of these if you saw the earlier video this guy however is an actual uh, Yankees player or was unlike the other card which was an umpire so I think he might be worth a bit more and he was an outfielder in the 20s and 30s there's his stats he's in the hall of fame but this card is from the 70s so we'll see how we can do with that this one I love check this out what is going on so it's embossed heavily embossed we have a stork and a rather elderly cherub i mean this cherub is a tween usually they're babies right i mean i guess he's cupid maybe because he has a quiver but no arrows and no bow he just has this strange strategically placed quiver and then wings and roses it says hearty congratulations so i assume this is oh there's his bow okay so, but i assume this is a uh a congratulations on your new baby which you got because a stork came after cupid shot you and i don't know it's just very strange but it's very it's a really cool image the way it's like the embossing makes it a little 3d in the grass with the way it's colorized and it's just so um like the stork's expression so knowing and cupid just seems so i don't know a mischievous pair at any rate i think this is pretty unusual it's not there's no real personal message on this side so who knows it's date postmark 1908. uh here we're back to camp dix this is football it is one of the sports more recreation uh during world war one and th I think this would be football as in football, not as in soccer, I think, based on that ball, right? So that's kind of cool. Army life is a great life after the first two days. It's kind of funny. Here's another awesomely weird one. Here's a gnome feeding a duck a heart, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty cool, though. I really like this gnome. Sadly, this has some damage, but what can you do? This one has a postmark of 1911. It's a, it's a happy birthday in German. 
and it's just look at that <laughs> I don't know it's just so great this I think is maybe a Guinness ad but maybe not at any rate it's a funny like drinking joke with a really early car and it's an undivided back all the blood's getting into my head I wish beer was getting into mine I'll have a Guinness at the next when are we looping the loop what about brandy and soda I could do with a bottle of bass we are drinking in the beauties of the district when there's nothing else to drink I mean this is too early for uh, prohibition but I don't know it's kind of funny I suppose um, this is just a nice view of, again, the Buck Hill Falls, Pennsylvania ski resort place. It's just kind of attractive. This one, Florida Gator quickie card. You'll see these around where you just check off what is applicable to your trip rather than um, writing something. They're pretty common, and I would have thought this one wasn't very desirable but i saw some comps that tell me that it is in the between 10 and 20 dollar range so that is where we will aim it's a kurt tyke which is a pretty common uh publisher of this linen era um this is a really early brooklyn bridge view Again, Brooklyn Bridge is usually something that is far too common to be valuable, but this is a quite early view. Has um, a nice dock image of the ship in there. No, well, the ship's behind the building, I think. It is a, I believe, a real photo postcard. Yeah, it is. Um, you want to see? Can you see that? It's. Um, printed on very matte paper. It's just it's just a nice early view. This is undivided back. It's actually postmarked 1903. All right, we got Easter. This one I'm only um, putting in the better pile because these bunnies are wearing clothes. <laughs> They're also kind of funny. Like, what are they doing? But um, it's really dirty and I might, this one I might try to clean up again with my plastic eraser. I don't think it's going to do a lot of good because this is not really um, just dirt. It's it's foxing or discoloration to the paper. Maybe this part. Let's see. Yeah, this part will clean up a little. So I might do this more before it hits the scanner. But it is, it's just going to be kind of dirty. So we've got anthropomorphic rabbits here. Some Easter eggs. It's from the 20s probably. Uh, here we have <laughs> more mica and in fact we have globs and globs and globs of mica and I think this was airbrushed on top or underneath the mica a bit I guess on top and then we have this wooden frame which is the thing people collect so I guess it go this way very shiny pansy so this one we will sell on those merits. Here we have <laughs> yet another transportational vehicle seen on Port Monmouth Creek, Port Monmouth, New Jersey. This looks a little later to me, maybe 30s, 1929. Um, and it's the kind of thing where, I mean, that's somebody's family. I don't know whose, but perhaps people who spent time boating there would find this appealing. Here's another super crazy glitter card. It looks kind of gross. I'm sure it looked better when it was new. <laughs> but um got this more more mica and I think it's it's clear mica that has some airbrushing on it. And it's very similar to the to the other one in the frame. I would almost list these together except the frame is a thing people like specifically. This is another airbrushed um, embossed card, best wishes, but it's a little unusual. It's kind of um, interesting coloration. Okay, this, I'm gonna just put aside for a second. Um, here we have a trick postcard, use a mirror. 
This is an advertising postcard for Morris Evans household oil. I know I read that without a mirror. Can you believe it? Which is, this is like a quack medicine thing. It's the home remedy for rheumatism, lumbago, sore throat, and something else. Sick. I can't tell what that says. This is some oil that's going to make you all better. And it's a cool mirror image postcard. And that's what the back looks like. I think that one should do well. This one is just kind of unusual. It has um, some, this is just some sort of weird paper and some um, floss or string. And then this embossing and then mica. And then this, this looks kind of like it was applied with a stencil. It could be, it could be green printed but it just kind of looks like a stencil actually to me and then this kind of airbrushed stuff back here I don't it's just very crafty for a mass-produced postcard maybe it's not mass-produced maybe somebody sat down and made this I don't know but it's it's early and it says something in a language <laughs> oh Polish <laughs> and um, it's just unusual and it's super deco here we have some collies and dogs are always the best so collies in a frame and uh we are two dogs of renown we have lately come to town you ask why we look so glad it is some good news we have had <laughs> they're very eloquent collies so this i think i'll probably list in the collies category rather than postcards but i think it would do well either way that's what the back looks like all right, here's another uh, <laughs> one that will have a certain appeal to a certain person. Uh, we have a nice, terrifying to me clown and a chorus girl type uh, woman. Though I do like the way the clown has a donkey and a cat and whatever that is on his suit. I think it's maybe a, I have no idea what that is. But anyway, I do like the donkey head. And then there's the people dancing back here and the jolly comrades. It's very uh, art ball feeling. N you know, people do like clowns. Not me, some people. And this is a Tux postcard on top of it um, from the Carnival series. So that should do pretty well, I think. This one I'm pretty sure is a seriograph, though I it doesn't have any information and I really wish it did. So this feels like paint. It's quite rough. And I think it was made like a screen print with layers laid down one after the other for each color. So there's a yellow and then there's this orange color that's in there and in here. And then there's blue and the dark brown. So four color stereograph. Oh, and black. Unless that's made from a mix. No, it's probably black. So five color stereograph. It's just kind of striking and graphic. And I believe basically handmade. But it doesn't have any info. I'll just list it with my best guesses for what's going on. Here we have some charming Dutch or German, no Dutch, I'd say children. Um, this is a winch postcard, which you can tell from these five squares and the little leaves and the swirly line, which is a thing that's collected. This is particularly charming. The kids and the pansies and the gold and the masts of the ships. Just a nice view for this kind of sentimental Edwardian art. Here on the other end of the spectrum, we have some bringing mules out of the mines in Mouch Chunk, Pennsylvania. So mining is a collectible category. Personally, I'm quite fond of mules. And this is just kind of an interesting scene with the, the rails and the mules and the hand colored. It's not a real photo postcard, but it is seemingly hand colored and they've used a very strange color for that that mule it's not written upon here we have a bird's eye view of allentown pennsylvania 
published by Deals Furniture House. So this is um, an advertising card from the Furniture House. It's also a bird's eye view of not the hugest city in the world, Allentown. So that is some things going for it. Bird's eye views are good. Um, named advertising places are good. And this is apparently from a series because here's another one. This is different, but same topic taken from Deals Furniture House. N nice, interesting view of the residential area. This is a real photo and I'm going to call this an occupational image, which is a thing that makes postcards worth more. <laughs> uh, I believe these would be waiters at some place with outdoor seating, but that's all I really know. It's not... There's nothing elucidating on the back, but it's a cool image. So we have real photo postcard of some waiters. And then finally, this one is just a linen touristy card, but I looked up comps and the last one of these sold for $17.50. So we'll aim for the sky here. This is the bathing pier at Sandy Beach, Harvey's Lake, Pennsylvania. So clearly, a, you know recreational area and that is that pile oh coming back to this thing so this is a postcard that was sent out in 1935 and it has a reply card attached to it over here and interestingly this design here with the vertical bars and this um, kind of permit and this in a box these business reply cards or as we call them brcs i mean we graphic designers who have to make this sort of stuff call them this design went into effect in the 20s i think 27 or 28 and has remained largely unchanged ever since so if you see something like this it doesn't mean something is uh new but at any rate so it's it's addressed to uh like an anonymous everyone and it has a brc and then it's U.S. government jobs, twelve sixty to three thousand dollars a year. Men, women, age eighteen to fifty, and it's from the NRA, not that NRA, <laughs> but the NRA that was sort of a precursor to the WPA in the thirties. It was a government jobs program to help with the depression. Uh, it was shut down after a couple of years, but for a while they were helping people to get work. Uh, so this is pretty interesting that this has survived intact. That's really ephemeral ephemera, <laughs> shall we say. And it's it's pretty interesting. Do you want to be ready to fill one of the next thousands of jobs with government that must be filled from time to time due to death retirements or normal government expansion? You can make 105 to $175 per month. Anyway, I just think this is interesting and it's seemingly extremely apropos to the uh, current situation. I don't know how much this is worth, if anything really, but I'm going to definitely try to list it. I didn't see anything similar. So we'll see what we can do with that. And that is that pile. And I may need to drink a whole lot of coffee before I can talk anymore. Until then, please hit the like and subscribe and thank you and take care.